everybody. We have a sunny but super cold morning. Just getting out of here. So. And we got Champions League to talk. Um, groups A to D are clearly more interesting than groups E to H. Uh, there's still something to play for and not much ACs are there are some decisions of course. Uh, I only really watched one game yesterday and it, no it was not the big one PSG Liverpool because that was on Sky. So the zone I took the next best thing which actually was anyway um, I don't wanna say um, more Dire, but yeah, it was a two or die game as well with uh, Spurs against Inter, Tottenham against Inter. I realized yesterday that um, in England, the UK, everyone says Spurs, of course, it's Spurs. Uh, while here in Austria, Germany, you more commonly say Tottenham. So, and I'm always saying, yeah, Tottenham, Tottenham, top, Tottenham. And um, I remember once going to, going to the office and we have had, had business from the UK and I had my Tottenham shirt on and I said, oh, Spurs! And they kept always talking about Spurs, Spurs. So, yeah, it was an uh, error on my part. I did see a fraction of Atletico against Monaco. And I, I honestly have to say, I. I know I cannot really watch it because uh, uh, my wife came home a little, little bit late. I wanted to uh, have dinner together with her and the kids. Well, you know, the kids always making more noise than eating. And then I offered her to bring the kids to bed, and she also has a little bit of free time. So, uh, well, I said I can bring them to bed. So we did. Uh, I said I want to watch the game at nine o'clock, and uh, almost worked out perfectly, except that the kids did everything to delay. But enough of complaining. So I saw a fraction of Atletico against Monaco, which on paper is the more interesting uh, game. However, all of those, I think, uh, if you look at the CAC situation, uh, you, a lock against Galatasaray was probably more interesting but okay uh, I put that one on a little bit more star power and when I you know I pulled it on I didn't even pay much attention to it and then I saw oh it's already 2-0 and when I saw the highlights well Koke Koke made it uh, within two minutes of 1-0 uh, was a deflected free kick and uh, right thereafter, uh, shortly after Griezmann, with a pre, uh, pretty darn good shot, uh, makes it 2-0 and that was that. Monaco got a penalty, which Falcao uh, put wide. Yeah, Falcao, of course, has great Atletico uh, past. And it's, I almost want to say, the last big star of Atletico that left because Atletico was not the, uh, was not the big team, I think. Uh, transfer from Atletico to Monaco these days, I don't think it's gonna happen. Uh, like that, it's just a freak occurrence. There was at that moment Monaco with uh, Robiolia, how it calls, uh, seemed to uh, threaten in France and tried to get a good squad together, and he got Falcao, and yeah. There you go. So Atletico 2-0, uh, which basically meant that Atletico is uh, qualified. Brugge had no chance of catching them anymore. They had nine points before. Uh, Brugge had five with six with six points. Uh, difference was not gonna happen. Uh, but now with six points you cannot catch. 5 plus 6 is 11, so you couldn't catch Atletico. So Atletico got their qualification spot and they stay in that group. Uh, Brugge and um, Dortmund 
played out a nil-nil draw, which kind of was underwhelming given how high-flying Dortmund was in the Bundesliga. But then, if you looked at the lineup, it was not a first-team lineup. So, uh, Pulisic was playing, for instance. Uh, so, there goes nil-nil, uh, uh, which means that Dortmund also qualified. However, uh, they are now in a slightly worse position for first place. They uh, need to win at, at away to Monaco and hope that Brugge gets a result against Atletico. Uh, so uh, that's basically all that there is left to play for because Monaco with one point also cannot catch Brugge anymore who got the point that they needed to qualify. And Brugge was actually playing uh, rather defensively to ensure exactly that point because uh, that point helped both of them if Brugge would have won then um, they could have had a shot of uh, place in the second round but that was never very likely um, also gotta say the, <laughs> the kids I know when we reviewed the Brugge kids we saw that this dance is red white they're playing with blue pants I mean it's Atletico in uh, oops a uh, very weird look, I gotta be honest. So, um, but yeah, I get no, I guess, I guess they could have played in their first uh, kit, the yeah, lucky Inter, more or less. Although I like Brugge. And uh, before going, I still say Brugge, uh, not Bruges, Bruges. It just, the Bruges doesn't sound too right to me. <laughs> Club Brugge. Club Bruges. Yeah, you can say Club Bruges. I just, I, I, I don't know. There, there I really prefer the Brugge. Okay, Group A. Uh, that's the... Uh, not the most important. Let's go to the big game in the evening where I saw... I saw only the, only the highlights. I told you that... Um, uh, they didn't show it, they announced that they will show it and then I think at last ditch the uh, sky basically t uh, said, told them no, 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 that's, that one is on us because that's the one big game that we have left uh, that everyone wants to see um, and sorry about the sun here that everyone wants to see uh, if PSG gets eliminated uh, right off the bat the jerseys made a lot more sense than in the game at Anfield that uh, PSG was playing in white and not black I think that made sense uh, the white Jordan jerseys look also a little bit better still don't like them I don't like the lack of red in there I gotta be honest with that anyhow uh, that game, at least in the first half, was all PSG. All PSG. Uh, attacking, uh, moves, going forward, Liverpool not showing much, and uh, they quickly got a 1 0 uh, through Bernat. And then another move of Mbappé, where uh, the Liverpool defense just could not hold him. He crosses in, Cavani can, um, cannot really connect well, but the ball. Uh, gets deflected to Neymar who slots it in 2 nil, and I think everyone thought this is done and dusted um, Which in reality it was however um, Di Maria made a, a horrible tackle on um, Was it Firmino? Uh, but, uh, whoever uh, hor Horrible tackle tack tack in the box is a penalty for Liverpool and oddly enough the referee first wanted to give a corner kick and then suddenly it, uh, he gets the signal. You know, that was a penalty. That the ref didn't see that, I'm sorry. Uh, now that we have VAR such decision, I mean he got, the, he got it right without VAR. So, But um, in a competition where you do not have VAR now, it seems suddenly very odd to get a uh, wrong pose uh, that to me is a very telling sign I mean the World Cup really 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 got us into liking bar and yeah we still like we like bar we would like to have had in the Champions League I would hope that maybe in the knockout stages when there's basically only big stadiums left and all the capability that we can get more together 
um, I doubt it however maybe they could make it that uh, let's have it for the Champions League final because that would be only one stadium where anyway war is already used which is uh, Madrid but not the Bernabeu it's the Wanderla Metropolitan Anyway, uh, and Milner converts the penalty, so it's 2 1 at halftime. Uh, result very flattering to Liverpool at that stage. Uh, everyone probably agree with that assessment. In the second half, there was not much from PSG coming anymore. Uh, well, similar from Liverpool, yes, they tried to do something, but there was. The highlights didn't show any chances that stuck. I think the biggest chance was a header from PSG onto goal. Um, and that was that. Uh, quickly back to the penalty. Sorry, that's the sun again. Um, I thought that it was weird how Buffon was off the center, kind of inviting Milner to go on his strong uh, foot, um, strong side, and then he dives even to the weak side. So it's kind of. I thought Buffon is a great goalkeeper. Just putting it up there. So, with that result, PSG flip-flops, um, Liverpool has 8 points and um, Liverpool has 6 points and now uh, everyone looked, of course, to Napoli, uh, Naples, it still sounds right, Napoli, sometimes, I have the same problem with German sounds, sometimes the, um, how to say, the local, uh, the name in the uh, local language of a uh, town sounds better than in the uh, transferred language, like English or German. Uh, so Napoli against uh, Red Star Belgrade, and this time Red Star Belgrade played in their red kits. That was the first time we saw those. And Napoli just went, did what need, need, needed to be done. Uh, Mertens had already a really nice chance uh, with a back heel, a kind of a back heel uh, to make it 1 uh, nil, but that was saved. Uh, but soon thereafter, Hamshik made it 1 nil, um, and Mertens makes it 2 nil. After the half, with a wonderful, wonderful shot, Mertens makes it 3 nil. And a red start, though, gets uh, uh, their own goal by El Fardou uh, after a wonderful assist by uh, Marcus Marin, a German who actually is, uh, the, uh, has the highest assist total of any German player in the Champions League this year. Not the winner. So um, he dribbles, dribbles, dribbles and then plays such a wonderfully weighted pass, pass uh, to make it 3-1. Um, uh, was actually a beauty. Was it 2-1? I think, it was, I think I got it wrong, no, but I not hang on from You know, I'm watching those highlights in the morning. I made in uh, at least notes, but I didn't put the order down. Um, I think it was 3-0 and then 3-1. Uh, that's how it went. And therefore, Napoli puts himself in probably the best position to advance uh, with 9 points. Uh, PSG has uh, 8 and Liverpool 6. Um, so from the table it seems like this is the best, but then you gotta know that Napoli needs to go to Anfield. And with a win, um, well, direct duel, Napoli won 1-0 at home. If uh, Liverpool wins only 1-0, um, then it's even, and then it's goal differential where Napoli, no, they would be dead even then again. Napoli is plus three, Liverpool has plus one. I don't I have, have written down the, the goals, and I would think that their Liverpool has a slight advantage. So, yeah, uh, Liverpool needs to win at home to Napoli to advance. I honestly think the way Napoli is playing in the Champions League, that Napoli could get that whole point. And unfortunately, I probably won't be able to see that game. PSG just has to take care of business in Belgrade. Also, not that easy. Uh, PSG needs to get the win in Belgrade, uh, otherwise they're out, probably, unless Napoli gets the point. So yeah, there's a lot going on there and I said it before and I have a feeling that it might be Liverpool that does not make it out of this group for the simple reason that they probably put everything into the uh, championship. 
which I think is valid to do so. Um, I honestly, I honestly wouldn't blame them for them. And I, I wouldn't think it's such a disaster for Liverpool. Uh, but yeah, very interesting group. So that was Group C. That was the big game. Now the other big game, and that's the one that I watched, was of course Spurs against Inter. Um, I didn't see the first 10 minutes where I heard Spurs had already uh, good chances. Uh, when I watched, I had the feeling that Inter has control of the game, but Spurs is um, kind of waiting and see, a little bit counter-attacking um, and more dangerous. And that's exactly what all the, all the proof, and I think it's around the 40th and so on, there was really a sequence where you could see Tottenham has um, the better You know the better tools and skills going forward and they were definitely more threatening there was not much uh, there from Inter and uh, all, didn't help that Nainggolan uh, got injured and had to be replaced by Valero and honestly Valero did not make a big impression on me in that game um, Icardi was once through on goal uh, uh, I think Vertonghen made a timely Alderweireld made a timely uh, uh, foul uh, right on the edge of being a red. It's just if Icardi would have had the ball, I mean, it was a pass, so he didn't fall, wasn't quite there yet. Um, but that was very important because Icardi threw. He's yeah, not very. Uh, uh, thing that you would lie, lie like that. And that was the thing with Inter. They, although they at points controlled the game, and but Tottenham was a little bit more threatening. You always had the feeling that Inter has the danger um, in front of uh, uh, going for for them. With Icardi and Perisic, uh, you just have two players that can make the difference in the game, and you saw it already in. San Siro, where Inter pulled out a win out of nowhere. That game was done and dusted for uh, Spurs. So, um, so that was always the edge, the knife's edge of this game. Uh, I was surprised that neither Eriksen nor Son did play, especially after this great performance that Son had against Chelsea. Um, although I always have the feeling that he is a guy. I'm very impressed with him athletically and also his skills are great, but he is a waster of chances. Uh, really a big waster of chances. That's, that, that's the one thing I have to say um, against him. So yeah, uh, it was a little bit of a statement and can I say that the white pants on the Tottenham uh, shirt don't look good. It looks like they have a floating tire around their waist. Uh, that's where the gradient just doesn't work. Uh, you gotta make sure you wear your full kit, but this way it just didn't work. Um, the second half, there was some tension building, and it was more and more Tottenham who took control of the game and into falling back, falling back, falling back, which is not necessary in this game. And it was more of a case, Tottenham really didn't have that great chances. I mean, they had promising attacks and moved off the ball uh, amazingly well. Even within the box, they just, the final shot was usually taken from on the outside, but uh, I think there was a chance by Ali uh, that, you know, they played around in the box and then Ali makes the shot wide. That was also the first half, something like that. But um, it never, felt really that this is now the uh, they're super dangerous in having great in the terms of having great chances but they were super dangerous because you can see that the inter defense was kind of falling apart and keeping keeping the pressure up it was always a little bit chipping away chipping away chipping away at inter and that's exactly how it how, how it went and then Pochettino brings on Son which was his first uh, great move and Son immediately made an uh, impact and put danger on there. And a few minutes later, Eriksen comes on. Uh, also, the pressure was on Inter at that point. Um, however, the first big chance after those two came on, the really huge chance was Perisic, who was actually uh, well defended. I mean, the shot came out wide and uh, Juris could make the save. 
but you know, a little bit of better of a uh, aim, and that shot is in. So, and then I don't think Tottenham Spurs makes anything out of there. This was really a game that either uh, Spurs make the goal or um, if Inter scores, it's gonna be a tough call because that will give Inter the unnecessary um, strength to pull through. So this was for me, it was really a nice edge and it was an absolute must win. If Spurs doesn't win this, they don't hold the tiebreaker against Inter and it is through. So it was really right on the edge. But it was promising because Spurs came came out and came out well. And uh, it was in the 80th when a wonderful move of, of Sissoko on the side uh, played it to the center uh, to Ali who has the vision to just let it, let it, let it go through and Eriksen slams it home with the first really well played attack really well played, really dangerous and there it was, the 1-0 Inter threw everything forward and but it was not until stoppage time when they really, even Hamdanovic came uh, to the front Tottenham really tried to play it very smart they tried to get a few seconds, they tried to uh, pin Inter to the corner flag I know Kane uh, was a little, little bit clumsy but he was uh, running a lot Kane tried to waste some chances. By the way, Kane reminds me of, uh, you know, the Robin Hood movies. He would fit right in there. Very, very English looking dude, <laughs> in a way. Um, yeah, but then there was uh, the one chance, I think it was a corner kick, uh, where in the end, um, what's his name, Azamoa had a great shot that got deflected. If that wasn't deflected, it was have gone right into the edge uh, behind the post and would have made the goal. Yeah, speaking of post, uh, Spurs hit, I think it was Wilkes, uh, the bar in the first half, but I never thought that this shot was going in. Uh, I was actually surprised that it went at the bar and actually quite uh, not centrally so. But yeah, they held on, and thanks to Barcelona winning 2-1, Messi, Piquet, and I think Luc de Jong that got it. Uh, consolation goal. So thanks to Barca winning, it's now Tottenham and Inter in a distance duel. Inter at home against PSV looks to have maybe slightly better, better cards, uh, because uh, Spurs need to go to uh, Barcelona, however, have in mind Barcelona has secured first place, has actually nothing to play for except for maybe the few uh, euros uh, in points. I can very well imagine that Barcelona feels not a first string squad in that game. They have been known to do so quite a few times already. So uh, I'll. I'll be curious to see that one. So in that sense, uh, Spurs might not look that bad in that game. Um, but yeah, uh, it's still gonna be interesting, and probably those are the games that I have to watch. I think. I don't think they will. I think that Sky will go for um, uh, Liverpool against Napoli, and I probably will watch Barca. Spurs and we'll take it from there. Uh, the last group was already decided after the first game which was Lok Moscow against Galatas Galatasaray uh, which was a 2-0 win, 2-0, 1-0. Kind of disappointing. Um, now Lok gets their first win but there's still a point behind Gala. Uh, but basically um, managed that Gala is not not gonna qualify, cannot uh, catch Schalke or Porto anymore. So Porto basically had a uh, field day with Schalke, winning 3-1 was nil nil at halftime where they already had many chances. I think they were three, no two nil up, then Schalke got a penalty uh, 
which put the scholar at a very flattering 2 1 and then 3 1. Schalke in the neon yellow away kits, by the way, which yeah, made sense there. So Porto wins the group, Schalke is second, and it's between Gala and Lok for the remaining uh, spot. Lok has to play uh, away to Schalke, which have nothing to play for, but so does Porto, who have to play away to Galatasaray. Uh, so, you know, Lok basically kept themselves in contention. But overall, we only have um, four teams qualified out of those four groups. Uh, two groups more or less decided, uh, one group all to play for. And although uh, Chirvenas Vesta, Red Star, cannot make it to the knockout stages anymore. And a very intriguing duel for a last qualifying spot. So, yeah, did I say it wrong now? Now we have five. Uh, in this four group decide, so there are three spots to play, but there's a lot of drama into those three spots. Uh, and note one of Napoli, PSG, Liverpool will not be present anymore. A little bit sad, but that's how it goes. Well, let me know which games you watched, whether you agree with my assessment of how things are, um, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I would be happy if you see something differently. I will be happy to hear about you. Give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.